Giannis closed out the NBA Finals in style, becoming just the seventh player in NBA history to score 50 points in a Finals game, but he dominated all series long. The Greek Freak averaged over 35 points per game in the Finals. That was the third most in a player's first Finals appearance in NBA history. That led him to winning Finals MVP. He's just the third player ever to win MVP, Finals MVP, and Defensive Player of the Year in his career, joining Michael Jordan and Hakeem Olajuwon. NBA champion Kendrick Perkins, kind enough to join us now. Big Perk, good to see you as always, sir. We'll get you on the screen in just a second. Um, I'll get to you in a second, Perk. Stephen A., is this the best closeout performance in finals history? Um, it's right there. Um, it's hard for me to, um, you know, uh, to, to, to eclipse Jordan's 45 uh, because it was a game-winning shot. It was pressure. It was on the road against a loaded Utah Jazz team, and Michael Jordan delivered the goods. Um, I got, you know, I got one of my boys, a uh, uh, champ based out of Detroit. Um, you know, I'm about to block him for the entire summer because he thinks he knows <laughs> What's basketball. Up, it, he's, he's one of those guys. It's important to mention his name because he's so starving for attention when it comes to the sport of basketball. Kendrick Perkins, Max Kellerman, uh, Molly, uh, his name is champ. He's based out of Detroit because it's so important for him. Uh, to, to 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 get recognition he's just starving for it uh that 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 he texts me more than my daughters when it comes to the sport of basketball just an annoying ass person i'm getting ready to block whoa, him for the whoa, whole damn whoa. summer you do need you know sleep. What I'm by the way these are his friends i, I, yeah. I, 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 I love i love him but he get, when you get on my nerves you know how i am max can speak to that from an ex from a level of expertise <laughs> uh but 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 uh, it's, just, it's just ridiculous he's the same guy that had mike he said that he wouldn't even have lebron james in the top 10 so his credibility he just oh, goes yeah. out right. of the window right, right. right there. All right, champ. Come right. on, champ. He's, he's Get just it together. Done. Champ's uh, not but, even but, the top but, 10 but, contender. But, it's, it's ridiculous. But at the end of the day, Michael Jordan being on the road, uh, obviously that's a very, very big deal. Um, dropping 45, crossover, game-winning shot, epic, memorable, the whole bit. But Giannis was just so dominant last night. I don't think that any of us are in a position to look at an NBA finals closeout game and say, oh, this performance was better or that performance was better. It might have been aesthetically better when you look at Jordan and the crossover and the pose that we still hold on to more than 20 years later, you know, and stuff like that. Magic Johnson, you know, filling in for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar playing center against Caldwell Jones and Daryl Dawkins, Chocolate Thunder and people like that in the early 80s. We get all of that. But Giannis last night was so unstoppable. And to see him just shred all the critics, uh, all the cynicism, you know, the vitriol that was being thrown in his direction where people anticipated that, you know, he was going to miss his free throws. If he had just made shots from the field, then that would be one thing. But to do it by hitting 17 of 19 free throws when the guy, uh, you know, just just struggles to hit free throws so flagrantly. So that's the kind of stuff right, that question. seals the deal and makes you say, hey, before I make my you point, know, I can't play anything above it. Question. You got on me in the very first segment, because when asked if he is the best player in the world, I said Giannis can't be just dismissed from the conversation. Push come to shove. I put him third. But the title is disputed. Now, are you turning around and doing the same thing here? Or because are you saying, yes, this is the best performance in a closeout game? Is it just no. in the conversation or is it where do you rank it? I said to you that I can't put anything above Jordan's 45. OK, so it's not. Can't the you best. Did I not say that? Did I no, not say that? came the best. OK, so it's not the best. I, I agree. It's <laughs> not the best. It is not the best. I feel this the same way about this as I feel about. Giannis's status in the league. I don't put it as number one, but it's in the conversation. Let me tell you the ones that are better. You identified a couple. Magic Johnson, as a rookie, he was 19 when he entered the league that year, jumped at center and gave you 42, 15, and 7 in the finals. I can't put, that ab I can't put this above that. I just can't do it. Especially context matters. Everyone got hurt. Like, the Bucs were not going to be in the finals if the Brooklyn Nets weren't hurt. They were getting smoked. They would have lost in three if the, if the Nets were healthy. They wouldn't even have gotten to a fourth game. They were losing by 20-something points a game, and they, weren't, and they didn't even have Kyrie and Harden. It was just one or the other of them. Come on. So, so like, context matters. You bring up Jordan's game. I don't, have to go up, uh, you know, I don't have to go over that again. Let me give you the one that's actually number one. Number one is Clyde Frazier. And I didn't see it, Stephen A. Maybe you did. I wasn't born yet. 
Clyde Frazier in the 69-70 season, it was so his 1970 finals, went up because, as you always say, Stephen, a context matters. It wasn't that the team he was playing was lucky to get there or the Knicks were lucky to get there. He went up against a team with Wilt, Jerry West, and Elgin Baylor, who was supposed to beat the Knicks. That's three still, people could argue, top 10 or 15 greatest players who ever lived on the same team. Clyde Frazier in a closeout, game seven, not game six, against that team, not a Suns team that was also lucky that both L.A. teams got hurt, gave you 36, 19, and seven. That is the greatest closeout performance of all time. Giannis is, is in that conversation with Jordan, Magic, and Clyde, but it's not number one. Well, well, look, no disrespect to all the all-time greats because we have seen a lot of great performances and a lot of guys rise to the occasion. But when you look at what Giannis did last night and we talk about closing out the job and, and finishing your food, as he would say, he did just that. He didn't leave any rice, any corn, any turkey legs or, or oxtails on the plate. He finished the mission. And when I said, look how he did it. It's how he did it in great fashion. Being down 0-2, winning four straight to win the championship. But last night in particular, when the game started, it was one person on that floor that looked like they was ready from the moment, from the start to the finish. And that was Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak. He started with it on his mind, going, what, four for six from the field in the first quarter, attacking downhill, knocking down his free throws, something that he hasn't done really all playoff series long. He go up there and he shoot over 90% from the line. And then when you think about what he done offensively for just imposing his will, play after play after play, the cardio, the stamina, the will to want to have to do it. Because when you look at a game, when you look at a game six like this, the pressure is on the Milwaukee Bucks to close it out. You look at a game six, you know, it's a must-win situation, and he embraced that moment. And then when you talk about his defensive impact, five blocks, those were intimidating blocks. We kept saying, Stephen A., I saw you tweet out and say, don't throw eight in the ball. He looked petrified. He looked terrified or whatever the case may be. He did because it was the presence of Giannis down there embracing that center role. He walked in, stepping into three-pointers, not Knocking them down. And here's the knock that we all have had on Giannis. When it matters the most in those crucial moments in the fourth quarter, can he deliver? And guess, and last night, he did just that, whether it was from the free throw line or getting to the basket or making the, the, the block shots that, that was really needed at the time. He did that in every aspect. Well, and this is why I say it was the greatest closeout performance in NBA history. And finally, well, let's history. say something. Let, let, let's, let's point out something, KP. I'm not going to let you get away with something here. I understand that Giannis could be intimidating. Giannis was a man on fire last night. But don't act like you don't know when certain cats, the <laughs> moment itself is just too much for them. Now, we, good, we know good mm -hmm. and damn well that, that eight and bobbling the ball, even when he was rebounding, looking like he had grease on his hands. So I don't know what the hell it was. You know good and damn well that wasn't just about Giannis. That was about a closeout game in Milwaukee, and we had a young brother whose youth was exposed, and he was scared to death. That's number one. Yeah, but Number two, I, I want to say this, though. When we look at Giannis, okay. here's what I want everybody to appreciate. When we criticized Giannis in the past, it was because he didn't have the combination of a perimeter shot and free throw shooting ability. We've never accused him of being scared. No one has ever accused Giannis mm -hmm. of being scared. We thought that he played bully ball. He pushed you downhill. He had momentum and he knew how to finish at the basket. But if you kept him away from the basket like Kawhi Leonard did, it would be problematic for him. What makes it impressive last night is that, okay, you still might not have had a perimeter shot, but you was hitting a couple of them last night, even hit a three. A turnaround jumper in the lane, too. A fall away 15-foot shot. He hit that. Plus, he hit his free throws. So, last night was his night, but the free throw shooting was really what sealed the deal because you had to be brave in order to put yourself in that position because you know how you struggle from the free throw line, and he didn't care. And that's where 
he has to be applauded for his greatness last night because he faced adversity and said, I don't give a damn. Here I come. Yeah, and, and look, let me, Max, Stephen A., let me, let me tell y'all something. As a player, right, and you, when you're in the NBA Finals and you're pulling up to the arena at home and you see the big stage outside, you see all the fans, you feel the atmosphere, and you're walking into the arena, you see all the media, and you happen to take a, a glimpse to your left or to your right, you see the champagne right there, you see the, all the things, the trophy is sitting somewhere where you can see it, it's in your presence. That is it, that's, that's in the back of your mind, like as a player, that's in the back of your mind. And when we start, when we saw the start of that game last night, Everybody on the court looked rattled, except for Giannis. Everybody looked rattled. I thought, we, I mean, honestly, I thought we was looking at a JV high school game last night, the way that guys were playing and clanking off the side of the rim and shooting out balls and turning over the ball. Everybody was doing that except Giannis. And for him to complete the mission with, with a 50-piece wing dinner spicy, along with those five blocks and, 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 and dominating on the defensive side of things, it was just a hell of a performance. The, one of the um, greatest I've seen, the greatest. Perk, you just made the point I was going to make, so I'll just add this because, because everyone, I agree, everyone looked shook. The whole Phoenix Suns team, including Chris Paul, Devin Booker, looked tight early, right? Um, I just need to put, we have to bring up Bill Russell if we're talking about closeout games. He was Mr. Game 7. Bill Russell, and you a former Celtic, Kendrick Perkins should appreciate this, Game 7, 1962 against the Lakers, went for 30 points and 44 boards in one game. So Did you see the game, Max? To, of course not. We're talking about Did you ever. see the tape of the game? Did you see the I tape have, of the game? I have not watched that <laughs> game, no. Well, I, well that, 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 that would be, Max, why we didn't mention it. No, well, no, we didn't say that you've ever seen. It's, I didn't <laughs> see. That, that, I'm just saying that, would, yeah. that I, I, one would well, deduce that, you know, we want, we want something we saw. But it did occur. Max. But it did occur. It did occur. Like, let's okay. put it this way. Can we let and this Matt, segment go by without why mentioning you mention Bill Russell? Bob Pettit. We got to. Then why didn't you mention Bob Pettit? Bob Pettit dropped 50 in a closeout game against the Celtics in 1958. We can How come you we, didn't mention that, Max? We can mention a lot of guys, but right. Bill Russell got to be mentioned. We got to go to break. The Nets open as next season's titles favorites, followed by the oh, Lakers God. and then the Bucks. Everybody needs a vacation. Oh, when we come back oh, on the first take. Uh, <laughs>